Time is meant for grilling, and a backyard barbecue often involves burgers. But these aren't what you would see at your usual cookout. Today, we are talking all about gourmet burgers. The top choices in Pittsburgh, in fact, here with Pittsburgh Magazine's top picks is Hal B. Klein, associate editor and dining critic. Good morning. Good morning. We were just chatting. I asked you if you were a big fan of burgers prior to doing this. Yeah, I've always loved hamburgers. I didn't realize quite how much I loved hamburgers yeah. until I started researching for this story because uh, I had a lot of hamburgers to find the top burgers in Pittsburgh. I was just going to ask you, how do you even begin to find the top burgers? There's so many restaurants. How do you narrow it down? So I started with kind of, you know, things that I know just from being a dining critic, just from okay. knowing what's around town, started asking some friends, started asking some colleagues. And the thing about it is everyone has a favorite hamburger, right? Sure. So you end up with this list of, I think I lost count around 40. Oh my I God. definitely ate more than that. <laughs> <laughs> How many do you think you ate? Honestly? I mean, it was somewhere over 40, but it got to a point where I could, if I knew a burger wasn't going to make the list, I could take two or three bites and, and know yeah. that it wasn't going to make the list. How long did you do this? Was this over a couple months, or is this 40 burgers in like a week? It was about two and a half months of research. Okay. And I would I'd gather friends. We'd have hamburger tour nights. It was really yeah. fun. Oh, yeah, so it turned fun. into a fun thing. And I'm also really happy that I grow a garden because when I wasn't eating hamburgers, I was growing a lot of stuff from my house. I yeah. hear you, I hear you. So uh, what does it uh, take to make a really good burger? What sorts of things were you looking for? So here was the thing that I found was most interesting about this, is that there isn't a single thing that makes a great hamburger, oh, okay. but there are a lot of factors that go into it. So obviously it starts with really great meat. So if you're using fresh ground meat, it usually starts with chuck meat, and then a blend of some other meats like uh, short rib, brisket. Um, there are a couple places that have in-house butcher shops, okay. so they're able to kind of throw in some trim from some really nice meat as well. Um, so then kind of made all the difference. You think? Yeah, that makes a huge difference. And then you want to make sure that you're not using. I think the trend recently became to have these really thick buns, but thinner buns tend to be better. And if you want more, like use two and stack them. Oh, um, okay. And then get them like a really nice char, uh, preferably on a flat top. Which so they kind of cook in their own fat a little bit, sure, sure. or on a grill, so the fat's dripping down and then coming back up as smoke and adding that extra flavor. Now, what about toppings? Were they were they a big factor, or was this strictly just the burger? Sometimes. So I think in general, the general rule is to not go too crazy with your toppings. Okay. Um, and some of the ones that I went to almost like tried too hard, um, but then there are other places that do really thoughtful stuff with their toppings. So the Vandal is a place that comes to mind that doesn't do too much, but they have a little bit that's off the sort of traditional topping path, but enough to kind of add, you basically want that balance. So you want something crunchy and, and vinegary sure. and spicy. So let me ask you this, uh, some of the best, what are they? So the one that I found that was really like the most exciting thing in yeah. this was there's a diner in Carnegie called Gab and Eat. Okay, um, I love that name by the way. It's an, it's an <laughs> yeah. amazing name and it was one of those places that I walked into and I walked into a bunch of places like this that I thought, you know, oh gosh, the atmosphere, like let it be great. Right, right. And most of them were like, okay, and this one, just the burger, it's this, this smash burger, it's a thin patty, they're getting it yeah. from, they're getting yeah. like meat from like a nice place in Erie. Okay. Um, so that was amazing. Uh, you've got Bill Fuller coming on the show. Uh, his big burrito group has two uh, burgers on this list and okay. like kind of on both ends. So 11 is this very decadent burger that's topped with braised lamb. And then Kaya has eggs and avocado. And Kaya, so Kaya is an example of a burger, a rare burger that's fussy, that's actually worth it to be fussy. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Do you mean just like a lot of different a lot topics? Of top, like a lot of toppings. Like okay. You're going to end up eating with a knife and fork at the end. Really? Yeah. Okay. Are you surprised by how many places focus on burgers and just claiming that they're the best in Pittsburgh these days? I mean, a little bit. I think burgers, you know, burgers are always, you know, people are like, oh, it's a burger trend. And it's like, well, burgers are always around. I think people always like hamburgers. Right. Um, but I think it's a good way for restaurants to, to bring people in. It's a nice thing for people to have. And, you know, everyone really loves hamburgers, so... All right, yeah. and they're, they're all outlined in the Pittsburgh Magazine. So exciting, the top 19. Um, and I also want to ask you about the butcher's yeah. feature that you have, because this is a really cool thing, too. Right, and that kind of goes hand in hand, right? right? So I was thinking about what else could we add to the story, and I was like, oh, Pittsburgh has these really interesting butchers. So um, Whitfield, which has a fantastic hamburger, it's the restaurant at Ace Hotel, they actually have an in-house butcher that I spent time with breaking down half a cow, which is, which is a huge... Yeah. Animal. Oh, yeah. Um, so there's something like that. There's uh, the Butcher on Butler, which is a, a retail butcher shop um, that Mike Rado, who was actually recently on The Amazing Race, right, yeah. which was exciting. Yeah, I think he, he was on the show. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he's got a great butcher shop. And then Salem's um, in the Strip District is a halal butcher. Okay. Um, so taking, looking at butchery from a religious point of view and looking at the way they do that and just the, the real beautiful diversity of the clientele at their store and a place where you can get uh, whole goat and lamb and a lot of things that you might not be able to get at a lot of other places.
Very cool. Yeah. Very interesting stuff. Have, are you able to eat a burger again after all that research yet? Yeah, it's so funny. <laughs> I was actually visiting my brother in Chicago last weekend. He's like, you probably don't want this burger. And I was like, let's do it, brother. Oh, let's go man. for one and had a good one. But I'm, I'm excited to, to work out a little bit for a couple of weeks. Yeah. You know, <laughs> Got to get my body right again. There you go. Get ready for the next yeah. taste test. Well, yeah. thank you so much for coming in. We're excited about the article in Pittsburgh Magazine. And for all of Pittsburgh Magazine's choices for the best burgers in the Berg, you can check them out in the new issue or visit their website. We have a link posted for you at kdk.com slash PTL.